Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Tuesday, April 9th. I'm Jonathan All. The path of totality of the solar eclipse passed over southeast Missouri and southern Illinois yesterday, much to the delight of huge crowds of people gathered in many places. That was the scene at Saluki Stadium on the SIU campus in Carbondale, where more than 10,000 people gathered. St. Louis Public Radio sent reporters across the region yesterday to capture the sights and sounds of the total solar eclipse, which was hard to describe for many sky gazers. Amazing. No words. If, if somebody hasn't experienced it, they don't know what they're missing out on. Oh, so gorgeous. We'll have total coverage of the total eclipse coming up on The Gateway. Only the U.S. Supreme Court can now stop the execution of a Missouri man set to be put to death today. Sam Zeff reports. Governor Mike Parson denied clemency for 52-year-old Brian Dorsey, convicted of killing his cousin and her husband in New Bloomfield in 1996. Prosecutors say he was trying to borrow money to pay two drug dealers. In a statement, Parson said Dorsey punished his family for helping him, and his execution will deliver justice. One of Dorsey's attorneys called Parson's decision devastating. Some 70 corrections workers sent a letter to Parson asking for clemency. There are two petitions at the Supreme Court asking for Dorsey's death sentence to be commuted to life in prison. I'm Sam Zeff. The Justice Department is boosting efforts to fight crime in St. Louis. Its violent crime initiative will bring police funding and two additional prosecutors to the U.S. Attorney's Office. The Drug Enforcement Administration and other federal operations also will receive funding for research into new violence prevention efforts. 11th Ward Alderperson Laura Keyes says police should use additional funds for routine patrolling. Not a lot of violent crimes like robberies. We, we haven't had a whole lot of that kind of stuff. We don't see police in our community anymore, and we'd like to see that. Homicide rates in St. Louis were down 21% in 2023. Key says better police community relations would also help eliminate violent crime. Crime prevention organizations can also apply for part of the federal funding. The outgoing head of the FBI office in St. Louis says partnerships already in place when he came allowed him to bring down violent crime in the St. Louis area. St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Littman has this recap of Jay Greenberg's tenure. Greenberg took over in May 2022 as the country was emerging from the Omicron wave of COVID-19. That allowed him to transition away from managing the effects of the virus and how the Bureau did its job and to focus instead on those relationships with law enforcement and the private sector. Working with communities and people when we didn't have fear about gatherings anymore and really just jump-starting all those efforts. Greenberg says he is especially proud of the work the office is doing with carjacking investigations. Agents also helped disrupt a scheme in which North Korea stole information from St. Louis companies and then funneled money to its weapons programs. Greenberg is taking a position at FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. His successor in St. Louis will be announced at a later date. I'm Rachel Lippman, St. Louis Public Radio. Thousands of people yesterday poured into towns, stadiums, and fields across Missouri and Illinois to watch the solar eclipse. Totality lasted about four minutes but left an emotional impression on many watching. Our reporters captured these sounds. I'm Brian Munoz in Carbondale, Illinois. Thousands of people pack into Southern Illinois University's Saluki Stadium to watch the total solar eclipse. It will be the last one in the region for over 300 years. Best of all, the sky is clear. Sarah Maxwell is here from Kansas City with her telescope. She tried to watch the eclipse in 2017, but the clouds got in the way. I'm going to cry a million happy tears. (laughs) I I just want to see this so bad. So it's going to be a very happy, emotional experience. Seven years ago, clouds blocked the view here in Saluki Stadium, too. Today, the crowds cheer as the moon slips in front of the sun in full view. (laughs) Nina Seidler-Wagner stands on the roof of the press box next to her mother. She made the trek all the way from Colgate, Wisconsin. Amazing. No words. 
if, if somebody has an experience that they don't know what they're missing out on. Oh, so gorgeous. This is Kate Grumke at the Bollinger Mill State Historic Site. It's about 20 miles west of Cape Girardeau, and the eclipse has just started. Here in southeast Missouri, scientists from Washington University have set up a tailgating tent with computers attached to telescopes and cameras. But they're not just here to study the eclipse. They're mostly here to answer questions, like this one from 10-year-old Maxwell Lagrasso. Why can't you look at the solar eclipse without glasses? Maxwell is a self-described science geek and aspiring future astronaut. He and his grandparents made the trip from Wakan, Iowa. How does the moon orbit, the dark side of the moon specifically, orbit right over the sun? Okay, so there's no dark side of the moon, actually. Answering Maxwell's questions is Mike Krasinski, an associate professor at Wash U who studies planetary formation and evolution. It's so exciting to be able to show the science to everyone here, because everyone is here because they want to be, they want to learn. Outside of the tent, the air is getting cooler. About 1,500 people are spread out on picnic blankets and lawn chairs in a field. As the moon covers the sun, the crowd cheers. Maxwell is watching with his grandparents. I'm like, oh my God. Like when I couldn't see it in, the, in my glasses, I was like, oh my God, what happened? I take off my glasses and I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. I'm Sarah Fenton in Chester, Illinois. This small town's known mostly for being the birthplace of E.C. Seeger, who created the Popeye cartoon. I am what I am, and that's all what I am. There's even a mini Popeye museum and shop here. It's the perfect place for Ryan Maxwell, a Popeye superfan from Indiana, to watch the eclipse. And I've got my Popeye-branded eclipse glasses. By lunch, there's a steady stream of cars heading into town. Hundreds of people gather at a hilly park on the south side. St. Louis College students Devin Kriegler and Jalen Bogard sit watching the sky dim. It looks like if you took a low exposure photo or a video of everyone. It's also getting chillier and chillier by the second. Um, starting to feel the wind and everything, so it's also really cool. And then finally... Where is Kyle? It's not even... What? Oh my god! Glasses off? Glasses off? Yes, yes, take it off. Look around, look around. Oh. Take it off. Their friend Azaria Covington says this trip is special. We all just like came together and decided to come and appreciate, you know, the wonderful universe that we live in, which is really cool. Um, so I really liked experiencing it with people that I care about. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> That report comes from St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fentum, Kate Grumke, and Brian Munoz. While earthbound eclipse watchers Monday kept an eye on the weather forecast and hoped for clear skies, others found a different view, above the clouds, on board a plane passing through the zone of totality. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin had a seat on one of the flights. At Lambert International Airport's gate E-14 Monday around noon, the mood's a lot more festive than usual. There's balloons, cookies, star and moon decorations, and Southwest Airline employees like Ivy Goodlow wearing black t-shirts with the date and the words, I got mooned. We have hula hoops and we have jump ropes. And if you stay there the longest doing this hula hoop, then you get a blue ribbon. And we have a person that's probably going to be the winner. She's, she's going. She's going. She's going. All right. Good job. That gets a blue ribbon. That is a blue ribbon. About 150 paying customers crowd the gate, plus a handful of journalists, including me, who Southwest gave a free ride to document the occasion. We're all waiting for a flight to Houston. It's one of three the airline identified as offering the best chance to see the total eclipse. Many travelers here are in the midst of some very long days. A lot of them flew to St. Louis to catch this flight. We had to take a flight from Albuquerque to Denver from Denver to St. Louis, St. Louis to Houston, and then Houston to Phoenix, and then Phoenix back to Albuquerque. That's Tristan Martinez. Her 14-year-old son, Nico Martinez, is a budding astronomical photographer. He wants to make up for a mishap that happened before the total eclipse in 2017. I was in New Mexico, and I was like seven, and they stole my solar eclipse glasses at school. <laughs> this time, he's prepared. 
with a snazzy digital telescope that takes photos. It'll be able to take long exposures. I can take a time lapse of the eclipse. And uh, I can take pictures of the sun's corona. Other passengers are less scientifically minded, but know they want a dramatic view. Babette Lewis flew here from Minneapolis to take this flight. I just started reading about it and seeing photos that other people have taken from previous eclipses from airplanes, and I thought, that's something I wanted to do. We were told to expect the view of totality pretty early on in the flight. And on board the plane, the captain makes announcements to let us know we're getting really close. We're pretty much in the uh, middle of the zone of totality. So looking down, it's like it's a dark, almost could be a dark haze. Can't see the ground. People now crowding over to the left side. Wow, it is dark out the window. The sun is nearly straight above us, and it isn't easy to see it from the cabin. The pilot banks sharply to each side, giving folks on the left and right sides of the plane chances to crane their necks and try to catch a glimpse. The man next to me is crouching partially on the floor, twisted nearly upside down to get the right angle. When it's my turn, I lie across the seats on my back and peer up. Oh my goodness. I see, that is a total eclipse of the sun right there. The corona, I can see it, there you go. Oh wow, there it comes. It's just coming back now. That's it. I that was short, but we got it. We, we, saw, it. we saw it. Nico Martinez is a row behind with his digital telescope. He didn't get the great time-lapse photo he wanted, but he's excited to compare notes with you. See the, did you see it in totality? I did, I saw it. You saw the sun, did you see the solar flares? The two little red dots on the side? I did not see red dots. I think I might have seen For the rest of the flight, folks chat and share photos while the eclipse buzz lingers in the air. As we walk off the plane, airline employees at the gate give us an ovation. It's one last surreal twist on an unusual journey. At William P. Hobby Airport in Houston, I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. Thanks to Chris Husted of the Midwest Newsroom who edited our Eclipse features. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a member-supported service of the University of Missouri, St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Jonathan All, and from the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.